Mexican President Andres Manuel López Obrador announced his country will open lithium exploitation to private investors. Italy's Lampedusa shelter for asylum seekers is overcrowded and expecting more arrivals as the number of migrants from Africa is on the rise. And the Palestinian mourned two young fellow countrymen killed by Israel in the occupied West Bank. From the headquarters of Telesur English in Havana, Cuba, this is from the south. I'm Jorencor Gladys Quesada in this are the news. On Wednesday, Mexican President Andres Manuel López Obrador said his country will open lithium exploitation to private investors. He said private capital will compensate public funds to develop this recently nationalized sector. The announcement comes a week after the creation of the public-private lithium company MX. The new company will be located at the state of Sonora, along the border with the United States. The aim is to turn that region into an area that generates clean energy for the automotive industry. Venezuelans had been suffering from the unilateral sanctions and the economic blockade repeatedly imposed by the United States in recent years, forcing citizens to struggle with medicine shortages and surging prices. Since 2014, the U.S. has imposed a series of sanctions against the Bolivarian nation, loading heavy burdens to the country's oil and mining industries, finance and other fields. In 2019, the sanctions were further extended to food, medicine and other livelihood areas. Many overseas companies have stopped exporting supplies to Venezuela for fear of the U.S. sanctions, which has even intensified shortages in the country. It is the United States that is starving so many people in Venezuela, and not just Venezuela, but all those in Latin America which are being disobedient. Pardon me. I want to stress again that the U.S. government is trying to manipulate us to get what they want. What is it looking for? It doesn't care about Venezuelans, and it is not seeing us as human beings at all. Actually, it is eyeing on our resources, such as oil and gold. The United States itself wants to possess the national wealth of Venezuela. To increase its power, the shackles it said must be broken, and it must stop such practices against Venezuela and many other countries. On Wednesday, the Cuban Ministry of Public Health reported that a Cuban person living in the United States was diagnosed with monkeypox, the second case detected on the island. Authorities reaffirmed the latest case is not linked to the first one detected in the country, an Italian patient who was confirmed with the disease on August 20th. He arrived in the country five days earlier and was critically ill. The patient died on August 22nd. According to the Ministry of Public Health report, this recent case is a 60-year-old male patient who arrived in Cuba on August 26 from Miami, United States. On the 28th, he began with headaches, fever, general malaise, and sore throat. The patient was hospitalized on August 30th. A PCR test performed at the Institute of Tropical Medicine, Pedro Curie, confirmed the monkeypox infection. And a team of Peruvian archaeologists discovered the tomb of a very important priest in a religious complex in the north of the country. The discovery took place in the archaeological center Paco Pampa, located in the region of Cajamarca, by a group of experts from Peru's National University of San Marcos and the Ethnological Museum of Japan that have been exploring the site for almost two decades. The investigators referred to the tomb of the priest as a discovery of great importance because it is about a powerful leader of approximately 35 years old and one of the oldest of the Indian civilization. The remains of the religion Religious men were buried with exotic necklaces of seashells, earrings made of semi-precious stones brought from remote regions.
A representation of the United Nations participated in the dialogue between the Ecuadorian government and the indigenous sectors. The UN reporter for indigenous peoples and nationalities, Francisco Calizai, participated at the table where he learned about the methodology used in the dialogues. The participation of the representative of the United Nations in the dialogue tables is one of the requests of the social organizations, which in the month of June carried out a day of protest to demand a solution to the increase in the cost of living. Also in Argentina, activists from different organizations and social movements continue to hold a vigil this Wednesday for the 10th consecutive day in front of the home of Vice President Cristina Fernández de Kirchner. Since Wednesday's early hours in Recoleta, demonstrators stand in place without interruption traffic to show their support. This is one of the many forms of support expressed by Fernandez followers. Since August 22nd, when Attorney General Diego Luciani asked for a 12-year sentence against the former president and her political disqualification. Also, Buenos Aires City Police, under the command of the opposition Horacio Rodriguez Larreta, remain in the vicinity of the residents, despite judge Roberto Gallardo of the province of Buenos Aires ordered that no police custody be placed. We'll take a short break now. Join us again after this. Welcome back to From the South. Former Brazilian president and presidential candidate Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva traveled to Manaus as part of his campaign for the October 2nd elections. During his visit, the candidate met with workers from automobile factories and participated in a meeting on sustainable development. During his visit to the Amazon region, he promised jobs and the protection of the environment. Lula also participated in the rally Together for the Amazon, where he expressed his criticism of the anti-environmental policies implemented during the administration of Jair Bolsonaro. On the same day, presidential candidate and current president Jair Bolsonaro traveled to Paraná, where he visited the cities of Foz de Iguazú and Curitiba to make a technical visit to the construction works of the integration bridge, in addition to other official acts and political events in the state. As Brazil's far-right president, Jair Bolsonaro, asked questions about why he and his family paid for 51 properties in cash, his allies in local governments are using loopholes in the law to evict poor families from their homes. In Pernambuco, our correspondent Brian Muir with the details. This June, the Brazilian Supreme Court extended a temporary freeze on forced evictions until October 31st. But in Santa Cruz do Capibaribe, the only city in Pernambuco where the majority supported Jair Bolsonaro in the 2018 elections, the mayor has told the 200 families in the Brizola squatter settlement that the police are coming to evict them. The major is threatening to remove us from here. There is a court order authorizing a forced eviction, and we don't have anywhere to relocate these 200 families. The mayor says that there are not poor people in Santa Cruz de Capibaribe, and no homeless people. We want to show the world that there are poor people here who need housing. Mayor Fabio Aragón, an evangelical Christian and staunch supporter of far-right President Bolsonaro, convinced a judge that since the families occupied the land after the start of the COVID-19 pandemic, when the freeze on evictions was put into place, the law does not apply to them. If we had the money to live anywhere better than this place, we wouldn't be here. We asked the major for help. Instead, he's sending the police to evict us. It's not fair because there are good people here, housewives, 
There are not bandits here. He should send his police after the bandits. Over six million Brazilian families are currently denied their constitutionally guaranteed right to dignified housing. Brian Mir, Telesur, Pernambuco. Thank you, Brian, for bringing us this story. And now we move on to other topics. An asylum seeker center on the Italian island of Lampedusa has become further overcrowded as a summer of hot and dry weather in the Mediterranean Sea has facilitated the arrival of people from North Africa. As of this week, the center, which was built to accommodate around 350 people, was hosting with some 1,400 people. Asylum seekers aim for the island of Lampedusa, either directly from Tunisia or after being rescued by the Italian authorities in an attempt to get to Europe. On Monday, more than 700 migrants arrived on the island. According to Italian Ministry of Interior, 57,000 people have reached Italy by crossing the central Mediterranean so far in 2022. Meanwhile, the International Organization for Migration reported that over the same time, more than a thousand people died or went missing in the attempt to cross the sea. And Poland asked Germany for war reparations of 1.3 trillion euros. The Polish government has agreed to claim 1.3 trillion euros as part of the financial costs resulting from the Second World War and as part of war reparations. As the presentation of our report estimating Poland's losses during the Second World War, Law and Justice Party President Jarosław Kaczynski announced that Warsaw will claim war reparations worth 1.3 trillion euros from Germany. He also said that the process for receiving such reparations will be long and difficult. It is a very serious amount, a little over 6.2 trillion zlotys, that is approximately 1.3 billion euros. But considering that the payment of this kind of compensation is spread over decades, it is a sum that the German economy can perfectly overcome without being crushed. The compensation paid to France for the damages of the First World War stopped only 10 years ago. It can therefore be considered that this sum is quite realistic. On Thursday, Hungary's Teachers' Union held a protest on the first day of the new school semester, criticizing the government for neglecting the public education system. Union members stood outside their headquarters to highlight issues from teachers' qualifications to low wages. In Hungary, public school teachers have for years complained of low wages and high workloads that have served to dissuade potential new teachers from entering the profession, creating a major shortage of educators and growing discontent. Following a series of unsuccessful consultations with the government on raising wages by 95 percent and reducing the working hours, unions call on teachers in the first days of the fall semester to continue a series of strikes and work stoppages that began earlier this year. <laughs> The government has completely neglected the education system, and the main problem here is not the wages, but the rigidity of solicitors and disregard for the whole system. In order to transform the Hungarian system into a modern 21st century education, the most important step is to have the right number of teachers with the right qualifications, and these requires adequate salaries so that they are not lured away by the private sector. Telesur will dedicate its coverage of the Football World Cup Qatar 2022 to the figure of Diego Armando Maradona, who accompanied our crew in the last two World Cups. With the football star, we also toured our continent with the show The Sur de Viajero. We want this tribute to have its own music. With that in mind, we invite you to write or compose a song for Telesur's coverage of Qatar 2022 Football World Cup. It must be an original song, never recorded before or published in any media, and free of legal attachments. Record the song in any format, WAV, MP3, even with your cell phone. And send it as an attachment to Comunicaciones at telesurtv.net with the following information. Author's name, nationality, and the name of the song. The closing date of the call for entries is September 10th, 2022. A jury of prestigious musicians and composers from the region will select the winning 
piece. The prize will be the recording of the song, a video clip, and the wide diffusion of the work. One week after the closing of the call, and now Telesur will announce the results. And we have more news coming up after a final short break, so stay with us. Welcome back to From the South. The Israeli army has killed two Palestinian men during separate raids in the occupied West Bank. According to the Palestinian Health Ministry, the men were identified as Samer Kled, 25 years old, from online refugee camp in Nablus, and Jizan Afanech, 26, from a neighborhood south of Ramallah. Kled was killed after confrontations broke out with the Israeli army during its raid on the Balara refugee camp in Nablus. Afanech died about an hour later during confrontations that broke out following an Israeli army raid on Umm al sarajat The number of Palestinians killed by Israel in the occupied West Bank and Gaza Strip raised to 140 since the start of the year. And Kazakhstan President Kasim Jomor Tokayev said on Thursday he plans to call a snap presidential elections on Adam and will reduce the presidency term to one, to one five year term. In an address to the Central Asian Countries Parliament, Tokayev also proposed holding snap parliamentary elections in the first half of 2023 after his country underwent a political crisis earlier this year that left more than 200 people dead. A presidential vote had been due in Kazakhstan in 2024 and parliamentary elections in 2025. Tokayev said he will move to the parliamentary vote forward after constitutional changes earlier this year. Also, Tokayev proposed the term of the presidency will be limited to one term of seven years, from the current two five-year terms. I propose that we hold early presidential elections this autumn. A new mandate of people's trust is needed for the successful implementation of cardinal and comprehensive reforms aimed at building a just and fair Kazakhstan. The International Monetary Fund on Thursday reached a staff-level agreement to support Sri Lanka with a $2.9 billion bailout spread over four years. Months of acute food, fuel and medicine shortages, extended blackouts and runaway inflation have plagued the country after it ran out of dollars to finance even the most essential imports. Financial assistance from the international lender is conditional on a plan to restructure the island nation's $51 billion foreign debt after an April default. The IMF said Sri Lanka had agreed to increase revenue, remote subsides, ensure a flexible exchange rate, and rebuild its foreign reserves, which had hit rock bottom. The country's unprecedented economic crisis sparked street protests that led to the ouster of then-president Gotabaya Rajapaksa in July. IMF staff and the authorities have reached staff level agreement to support Sri Lanka's economic policies uh, with a 48 month arrangement under the so called extended fund facility. The objective of this fund supported economic program is to restore macroeconomic stability and debt sustainability while at the same time protecting the vulnerable, safeguarding financial stability, and stepping up structural reforms to address corruption vulnerabilities and unlock Sri Lanka's growth potential. Now we move on to other topics. The mission of the International Atomic Energy Agency has arrived in the vicinity of the Saporizhian nuclear power plant just the day before the Ukrainian forces shelled the area, leaving three deaths. 
Rafael Mariano Grassi, director of the agency, said on Thursday that he was aware of the increase of military activity in the area and ratified that the mission is being maintained as the objective is to prevent a nuclear accident. The Russian Defense Ministry has repelled Ukrainian sabotage attempts and local authorities point out that Kiev is trying to prevent the mission because it knows that the truth will come out. Also confirmed three dead and five wounded, including a child, after the latest Ukrainian attack. Telesurity English continues to grow, it seems now reaches Europe. You can order it from your cable dealer or tune it yourself. These parameters that you see on the screen are in place since July 1st. Quite soon, further changes will be implemented for the seniors in the Middle East and Africa. Now, more than ever, the world connects to us and our stories are heard in other farther away nations. This news multi-platform will continue providing truthful content to oppose the hegemonic media's narrative and our faithfulness to our audience. And we have come to the end of this news brief. Remember, you can find this and many other stories on our website at telesurienglish.net. And also, if you feel so inclined, please join us on social media for all the latest news. We are on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Telegram. And now, you can also follow us on TikTok account at Telesur English, in which you will be able to see news in different formats, news updates, and more. For Telesur English, I'm Gladys Quesada. Thank you for watching.